So, welcome to the Lightning Talks. We have three talks planned today. Elizabeth, then Charlie, and then I believe it is Josh who's going to finish up for us. There's only one laptop going on, so the switching over here will be easier. The speakers will be handing a microphone back and forth between themselves. There is another microphone in the front row over there. While we're switching between speakers, if you have something to advertise, just wander up now, sit up in the front. He will hand you the microphone. You stand up in front, say what you got to say, some, remember some useful things. I've got a user group. I've got a project. We are hiring, or there's a conference coming up this season, or anything else. We're not picky. And if we have lots and lots of advertisers, we'll just keep going. We are not going to run out of speakers before we run out of time, so we're good to go. So remember about four minutes in, I have the bell over there now, and at five minutes or when I get to it, we have a gong. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use the first few seconds of my, my time to say um, I'm so glad to be back at CPOSC. I'm, I was here in 2009, and I gave my first conference talk ever here. So, yay! <laughs> Um, so, ba so back then, I was working for a small tech services provider in Philadelphia. Um, since then, I have moved to California, and uh, about four years ago, I was hired by IBM. Um, they said, hey, you want to work on mainframes? And I'm like, I, I don't even know what a mainframe is. Um, but they approached me because I had a Linux background, and I know a lot about open source. So these days, my job is um, giving away mainframes, kind of. Um, I give away space and time on mainframes for open source projects to do development on Linux. So we've got a few things that I wanted to quickly cover here. Um, so we have this Linux-only mainframe these days. These things like sit in 19-inch rack spots. Um, they look really slick. We just released one la last year. There's going to be another announcement this upcoming week about some new stuff we've got going on. Um, but we have a mainframe in a university up in, in New York um, that we give out space to open source projects on. So we have like a community cloud, which anyone can sign up for like right now. Um, you can scan this little QR code. It's not a Rickroll. Um, to gr like see all the resources I'm going to talk about quickly. Um, but you can request resources there. Um, your sign up gets approved pretty quick. Um, there's also an open source cloud that we um, like we vet the requests that come in based on making sure that you're not writing um, scary software that we don't want to support. But <laughs> most open source projects, like I, I look for an excuse to accept your request. So please, if you're an open source project who wants to build on this architecture, um, please sign up. We have a few other services that we sort of help maintain. Um, at Oregon State University, they have an open source lab. There is a Jenkins instance there um, that has runners. So if you're using Jenkins for your project, you can build for the mainframe architecture on that. Uh, some of the Linux distributions also have public build services. So OpenSUSE has a public build service that will build a bunch of packages for various architectures and that it does it automatically when you build um, through that service. Uh, the other one is Launchpad. That's the one that Canonical Ubuntu uses and you can choose to build for mainframe architecture along with a bunch of other architectures as well. Uh, there's a Travis CI build service. Um, that one you just add your S390X to your config file and now you're building for mainframe too. Uh, Circle CI, we just released a self like a self-hosted runner last month. Um, I tried it out a couple weeks ago. It's like the instructions are exactly the same for x86. So you just download the runner, run it on your Linux VM and there you go. And I used it with the open source cloud or the Linux One Community Cloud, so like everything I used there was free. And then finally, the Linux Foundation has the Open Mainframe Project, um, and they give out a, a bunch of resources too. And they actually just got their hands on a mainframe themselves, so they're also going to be running a bunch of stuff like on the ZOS side. So I work on Linux; they're doing all the other stuff really. And I think they're going to offer some Linux VMs because they asked me some questions. <laughs> um, now, just in case you, you, you feel tricked by saying I give away mainframes. Um, we do have a 3D printer model if you actually want to print your own little baby mainframe. I wish I had brought mine with me, um, but that's mine there in the corner. It's, you know, like, I think 110 millimeters tall, um, but that's fun. You can put a Raspberry Pi inside of it. Don't tell anyone I said that. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, there's an SDL file if anyone wanted to put one on their desk. So that's all I've got. So.
have an ad. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, CPOSC After Party. You might have heard of it. It's at Pub Forge. It's right after this. Well, right after the thing that's right after this. But it's right after this conference. Uh, if you don't know where Pub Forge is, no problem. Just meet everyone out in the lobby because there's going to be a big crowd gathering. And then you can just follow them. It's a block and a half, two blocks, you know, in that direction. You could see it if it weren't for all these pesky buildings. Food, beer, non-alcoholic drinks, et cetera, et cetera. It would be a great time. I think we're good. All right. Hello, everyone. My name's Charlie. Uh, amongst other things, I am a FreeBSD committer. FreeBSD is another Unix-like operating system. Uh, do mostly uh, ports work, so basically third-party packaging. Uh, today we're going to talk about a, uh, well, we're going to harken back to the last time I did a, li did a lightning talk here, which is about crappy scripts. And we're, we're going to kind of talk about one such crappy script in the Python ecosystem dealing with packaging. If anyone here has, uh, has maintained or built or, or did anything with Python packages that are meant to be installed using pip or some other tool or even executing the crappy script itself, setup.py, well, it's been deprecated for at least two years now, um, formally two years, but, uh, but even, uh, even longer uh, informally. So get rid of that as soon as you can because it is that crappy. Uh, because setup tools said so, but also we have a better, much better way of doing pa Python packaging, and it's called PEP 517. Uh, basically, it's a more declarative, uh, more declarative way of doing it. Uh, it basically just specifies like two hooks that you normally don't have to worry about because uh, most of the build backends like setup tools and flit and whatnot, they already have that, uh, they already have that squared away. So it's just a matter of writing a new uh, TOML file and, um, and getting, that, getting that squared away. So when it comes to uh, if you're a distribution or a system packager, uh, you just got to make sure you account for all of those and the Python community has, uh, has other tooling to, uh, to make that experience a little bit smoother rather than just continuing to, ex to execute your setup.py files directly. So um, this is really just an excerpt of a much longer talk that I will be presenting at BSDCAN uh, in May. Uh, that conference is up in Ottawa, um, just like this, but a little bit longer. Um, but the, the title of that talk is actually The Clash of the Package Managers, PEP 517 edition. So um, may maybe look out for the video if you don't make it up to Ottawa, but in the meantime, uh, That'll be it for me. Thanks. Any advertisements while well, the next speaker? No. Please stand up. All right. Um, I'll just plug a game I made for Love Em There, which is a game jam where you make a game in 48 hours. Um, I think this was last year I made it. It is a snake-like arcade game where you play as a conga line full of bombs called Bomba Line. You can play it at L-O-N-E-W-O-O-K-I-E, Lone Wookie, dot itch dot I-O slash Bomba, B-O-M-B-A dash line. Well, hello, my name is Josh. Uh, my interest in public source or open source is... Uh, I like to write code that scrapes, parses, and exposes public data. So in particular, I'm interested in Pennsylvania court records, which are all kind of tucked away in PDFs in some remote website. So scraping all those PDFs, parsing them all, putting them in big spreadsheets, and putting them on a website so that you can actually see the data and use it. That's my thing. But actually, the reason I signed up was uh, Jeff was wandering around in the lobby saying, yo, we want people to do things on a stage. I said, well, I have my harmonica. And he said, yeah, that's all right. So. We're going to do a sound check first. This is, you didn't know this was going to happen. So this could be really loud. You might want to cover your ears. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, wait. We want to bring it down a little bit. <laughs> How's that? Good? All right. Okay. Okay. I, I, I have never played before like more than three people at once. So yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I, I know you're clapping because I kept it short. <laughs> All right, this is totally unplanned, but there's no time, and it's a tough crowd, so I'm gonna gonna fill it. Uh, my name's Neil. I'm here on behalf of uh, Webshon Store, so thank you for paying me to come here or paying the bill. But what I'm gonna say has nothing to do with them. Um, I'm a software engineer there on the side. Um, I have a project going on called Ag Result. Um, uh, it's a Vue.js app, front end, Postgres database, back end, Express um, back end for um, for API. Um, our my customer is uh, beef cattle. Um, Farmers, essentially. So I built this in 2017, started um, by demand of a friend who raises like 2,000 head of cattle in um, uh, Mount Joy, where I'm from. And over the years, it's turned into a SaaS where people pay me to do it across the country. Um, in this area, we're really ag-focused, but not really high-production beef. Um, so there's, you know, out west, there's huge, huge, huge feedlots and stuff. Um, but yeah, so I could nerd out with you about cattle and the data and stuff, but yeah, if anyone knows farmers in the area that um, wants to have a good um, handle of their numbers, that's really what AgResult does. Um, it drives their feeding, the delivery of feed to their pens, um, does all the cost accounting behind the scenes um, for, for all of that, so they can, uh, with a few button clicks, um, you know, invoice their customers who might own the cattle. They get paid on their feed profit. Um, a lot of guys these days are just doing – ag is really behind the, behind the times, right, in tech. Um, maybe a lot of industries are, but I'm tuned into this one. Um, they do what, the, what, what I would call idealistic feeding, which is they have a ration that a nutritionist printed out for them, gave to them, um, with, you know, uh, protein levels and things that are perfect for the, the, the gut of an animal. Um, and they feed with that as their ideal feed, and they, they cost account based, based on that as well. Um, so what that means is their accounting to them is on paper what they would have done if, if everything was perfect. It wasn't. They dumped corn in with a big tractor. They put too much in. It's expensive, um, but they don't track that. So the software does that all for them um, and then prints them out, print out at the end of the animal's life, and they, you can tell them uh, their profit margins and things like that. So, um, yeah, if you want to nerd out about it or work with me, I'm totally bootstrapped, um, and we are profitable. What does that mean? Um, but... Yeah, if you want to do some ML on the data I have of cattle, of course it would be anonymous um, for, for my customer's sake. Um, you know, yeah, talk to me. It'd be cool. I'm sure there's some neat stuff we could pull and, I don't know, make pretty pretty graphs or something. So thanks for your time. Uh, agresult.com. So every ag tech company has to have ag in it. So agresult, no spaces, dot com. Yeah, free trial if anybody is a farmer. So thanks, guys. So we finished a little early. Those of you who are doing the wrap-up for the conference, you might want to be getting ready. Does anybody else have a lightning talk that they want to give and they're ready to go in just moments? Give in chance. Does anyone else have something to advertise, like a Linux users group here in Lancaster or a Linux users group over in Philadelphia or further afield? Come on down, find the microphone this side or that side. Uh, so, uh, Lanklog is a Lancaster Linux users group. We meet on the uh, third Thursdays. Uh, you can find us at, uh, we, right now we're virtual, uh, meetup.com slash Lanklug, L-A-N-C-L-U-G. On, <laughs> on the Philadelphia end of things, it's plug, Philadelphia Linux users group. We're still online, and it is the first... Oh, we have an update. Breaking news. Breaking news. It hasn't been. Um, oh, that's this better. Um, hasn't been publicly announced yet, but we may be going back for the second meeting of the month. We meeting traditionally twice a month because we had we met once in the city and once in the suburbs, and we've kind of kept that because people didn't want to come into the city and the city people didn't want to go out to suburbs. And um, so we've kept that up during the pandemic, even though, you know, there wasn't really any like, like logistical need to it, but you know, it's easy enough to set up a Jitsi meeting uh, twice. It's not any harder to do it twice a month than once a month. Um, but one of our venues may be um, having us go back in person very soon, perhaps uh, North. We may be back at, at Cordial again. So it's first Wednesday in the city when it happens, yeah, Se so second Tuesday. 
Second Tuesday, look on phillylinux.com. Or dot .org. Dot org. org. phillylinux.org. Um, so hopefully, I don't know, we'll need to, we need to have some uh, speaker too. Getting speakers has been, getting speakers has been tough in general during the pandemic, but hopefully, I think just people get tired of doing everything online, but hopefully once we're, once we're back in person again, we can get some, some live speakers again. So, and there will be pizza. They have very good pizza at Plug North too. Anyone else or anyone hiring? We haven't heard much of that yet. Here we go. Well, I'm not hiring, unfortunately. But uh, hi, my name is Greg. I was here giving the first speech of the day this morning. But I want to tell you guys, if you have not heard about it by now, TechLancaster.com is a great meetup to attend. It's really low pressure. Once a month, we get a couple of speakers in. We have a good time over at PubForge, one of Lancaster's co-working spaces, which is on the second floor, technically, of Telus 360, which is off of uh, Queen Street. Um, and uh, it's uh, a really good blast, and we've been building community for years. It now represents a network of meetups that are happening in the city. Right now, I can also mention Pub Standards, which is a bit more of a, a happy hour atmosphere, uh, but uh, it's uh, a great place to just uh, socialize with uh, like-minded individuals and even unlike-minded individuals. Uh, there's a few other meetups that uh, are going on that I don't have all the information on, but they are listed on our website, techlancaster.com, and uh, <laughs> Uh, we've been uh, slowly rebuilding since the pandemic, and uh, so far we're off to a great start. So if you ever want to drop on by, socialize with some of the people you met today, uh, it's, uh, it tends to be a really good time, so I'd love to see you people out. Thank you. I've got one, an actual ad for, for my company. So I work at Elastic. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, and uh, we're a sponsor of this conference, uh, one of the many. And um, I'm actually hiring. So uh, if anyone here is really into data, uh, specifically like data schemas, uh, I run a team that's responsible for Elastic Common Schema, uh, which is a logging and uh, event schema uh, that really drives all of our integrations and things like that. If you use any of our security or observability product or anything like that, you're, whether you realize it or not, you're using Elastic Common Schema. Um, so uh, we uh, are partnering with uh, the Open Telemetry organization, uh, OTEL, if you're familiar. Uh, super awesome organization. They've been driving really, st they've standardized uh, metrics and tracing, basically. Uh, and uh, it, like overnight, basically, developed a, a standard that pretty much everyone's adopted. So it's awesome. Uh, and uh, we've recently partnered uh, with them to work from my side, which is the security team. Uh, to help standardize logging formats uh, and some security data sets. So um, as a result, we want to hire somebody to work full-time on uh, open telemetry on this new uh, emerging joined schema uh, that uh, involves essentially merging elastic common schema, uh, although the details are to be determined. Uh, You'll be working full-time on open source software in an extremely visible uh, a project that will be used by millions of people around the world. So if you know a lot about data and have strong opinions about data shape and schemas and uh, you know how they should take shape, specifically with logging or security use cases, I would like to talk to you. And if you know someone, I'd like to talk to them. Uh, we're hiring from pretty much anywhere in the world. Uh, so thanks. Is there anyone else who has an advertisement? And while you wander down here, I have three of my own. If you are a Perl person and you've been wanting to get out with other Perl people, the European version of the conference will be in Helsinki, Finland, the third week of August. If Perl isn't quite hip enough for you and you've already moved on to Raku, previously known as Perl 6, they're having a separate conference in Riga, Latvia, the first week of August. And if you say, but I do Pearl and Raku, and I believe we're still one big happy family, and I don't want to cross the pond, we've got you covered. The third week of July in Toronto.
And seeing nobody else coming down, we will wrap up the lightning talks. So I will finish, as I always do, reminding you that we do this at many conferences. So start planning now. Remember, the first hit is free. And just a few short years later, you may be a keynote speaker. Thanks, Jeff, for doing an awesome job. <laughs>